Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Axel Wolf. I'm with a company called Seger. And um, I want to introduce you to a couple of tools that um, can make it easier to figure out what's going on in your embedded RISC-V application. So this is the agenda for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, first, I'll take a quick look into a typical embedded application and then talk a little bit about the problem, meaning you know, how do you actually keep track of all the things that are going on in there. Then um, at Segar, we wanted to solve that problem. And so we, uh, uh, I'm going to list the, the kind of components that you need in order to uh, solve that problem. Uh, then we'll take a look at the uh, complete solution. And then I can tell you how to uh, try this at home if you want to try it out. And then we'll have a little summary. So just a really quick one minute introduction of Segar. Um, we do development tools and embedded software um, for all kinds of targets. Uh, our headquarters over in Germany, uh, but we have offices in, um, on the East Coast in the Boston area as well as here in Silicon Valley. Uh, and we have worldwide uh, distribution network uh, to distribute our products. And mainly uh, there's four product groups that we uh, manufacture and support. First is uh, embedded software, meaning that's the, the software that goes into the target, like uh, the RTOS and the middleware. Um, we do have the embedded software tools, uh, like the IDE or a debugger. Uh, then, of course, we do um, debug probes. A lot of you probably have used um, a Sega J-Link before, um, so we're pretty well known for that. And then the fourth pillar would be uh, the production tools, production programmers. Once uh, the whole project is done, that's a good way to get it into the target and uh, do high volume production. So if you look at a typical application, there's really a lot going on. Um, you might have an RTOS in there that uh, runs the whole show. Then uh, you might have a file system. Uh, you might have some networking uh, stacks or uh, pieces of software that do uh, communication. Uh, you probably have a USB device interface or USB host interface. Uh, you might have some other buses running on there like Modbus or CAN. Uh, you might have some security elements, obviously, these days more and more important, um, or you have encryption. You could have a bootloader in there, some compression software. And then, of course, you can have a, some graphics package running on this. And then on your, on your host, you have the development tools that you need to actually uh, develop and, and build and debug this application. So the, the really, the tricky part is how you actually keep track of what's going on in there. And usually you have a, you know, you probably have a, a JTAG debugger connected uh, to your system, but as we know, the uh, visibility that you get with that is rather limited. Uh, but you really wanna make sure that the system that you're building is um, up to the re requirements that uh, it, it needs. Uh, you might have some resource conflicts in there. You might have some other insufficiencies, inefficiencies. Um, so really, the, what you really want to have is some way of uh, visualizing what's going on in there um, and what's going on at runtime, and ideally without really affecting the real-time behavior of the target itself. Um, and then ideally also you would like to uh, record all that so that you can replay it later and, and um, see where you might have to tweak some things in your application. And of course, ideally, all this should be very low cost, ideally free of charge. And um, you also don't want to spend any more extra hardware like uh, pins or uh, any other hardware other than the debug probe. So the Elements that are needed to solve this problem, there's three of them. So one is um, you need a means to collect all this information on the MCU itself where everything is happening. Then you need a means to get all this information out of your target ship um, at high speed. And then you need a, a means to uh, 
visualize and analyze that data that comes out so you can uh, make use of it. And of course, ideally, it shouldn't matter which um, operating system you're using if you have a, a Mac or a Linux machine or, or a Windows box. So here's a closer look at the solution. Um, you have the target system on the left and the host system on the right. Um, so you need some kind of a data collection API on the target that then um, passes information to the uh, data extraction portion of the um, software. And that goes into a uh, data buffer. And then uh, that hooks up to your JTAG probe. And we go over to uh, the host side where you have a, a DLL that drives your, your debugger. Uh, you have the data extraction DLL portion on the host, and then on the top you have your app that you use to visualize and analyze all that data. So at Seger, what we came up with for the data extraction is something we call RTT, or uh, real-time transfer. So that is um, free Seger technology that um, you can use for interactive user I.O. in an embedded application. And essentially, there's other ways, there's other ways to do that, semi-hosting or SWO, but we're actually combining the best of, of both of those um, solutions so we can do that with high, uh, high performance. So really, with RTT, you can get information out of an embedded target at really high speed, and you're not really affecting the real-time behavior of the target itself, which is obviously important. And in order to run RTT, you need a couple things. You need um, a Segger JLink box, Segger JLink debugger, and you have to have a target processor that actually supports uh, background memory access. And there are certain um, architectures that allow that, for example, uh, the ARM Cortex-M or the Renesas RX. But also, um, the RISC-V-based chips can do that too. Uh, that is, if, if those devices support uh, a block called the system bus access block. Um, and that's part of the, uh, the debug uh, block. So if you actually take a look at the, um, uh, the debug spec for the RISC-V, uh, that describes the system, um, system bus access block. And uh, it also talks about the various benefits it has if you, if you add that block as a, as a designer. Um, so there's the three of them straight out of the spec. And of course, um, the other advantages it have, that it has is that it enables uh, the use of RTT on, on risk-based devices. So if you look at the performance of RTT, um, again, it's, it's higher than any other solution that we know to get information out of a target. So if you have an average line of, of text, uh, it usually takes less than a microsecond to uh, output that. Um, and if you compare it with uh, SWO or semi-hosting, uh, it might take you about 1,000 um, microseconds to do semi-hosting could be like 120 microseconds to do SWO, and the same thing could be done in just a single microsecond with, with RTT. So then for the actual uh, data collection and the visualization, we developed a tool called System View. So that's another free toolkit uh, for visual analysis. And with, with System View, you get that um, insight into your application that I was talking about. And obviously, the more complex your application is, the more helpful that is. And there's two parts to that. One is a visualization and analysis app or a software program that runs on the, on the host. And then there's also a small um, portion of embedded code that runs on the target itself. And that is the one that collects the information and passes it on to RTT so you can get it out of your target. So with System View, you have a bunch of uh, benefits. You can really see um, you know, which interrupts, tasks, and software timers have executed, uh, you know, how often have they executed, when have they executed, and such. 
And you can really see what's going on on the target side, um, task switches, interrupts, and all those good things. So let's take a look at real quick how um, RTT and System View work together. So uh, in certain situations, when you want to monitor certain events, um, the, embedded, the target application would call the System View uh, functions, the System View API. For example, when the interrupt service routine starts or when it's finished. And then System View passes then this information on to RTT and uh, together with a, with a timestamp. And that timestamp can be uh, really, really accurate. So um, it could be down to one CPU cycle. So at 200 megahertz CPU, that, that's about um, five nanoseconds. So it's pretty granular. And then RTT stores that information in, uh, in this buffer that I was talking about. And uh, you might say, okay, well, what kind of resources are we talking about that we need on the target side to, to use this? So it's actually not very much uh, in terms of um, ROM or flash size. It's less than two kilobyte that's required by RTT and System View to do this. Uh, in terms of RAM, it's about 600 bytes, so it's also not too bad. And in terms of um, affecting real time, it's about 1% uh, overhead, which is, um, I think, acceptable um, for the amount of visualization that you get. And also, since we're using the existing debug um, channel, uh, we don't need any additional pins on the device to do this. So let's look a quick, take a quick look at the um, System View host application. You have various windows in there that help you um, visualize the recorded data. You should see the, um, the video here. So uh, once you start System View, um, on the uh, top left, you have a window that shows all the events that are going on, all the interrupts, all the task switches. Um, then below it, you have the various different tasks, like the system tick, scheduler. Uh, in this case, we have a low priority and a high priority task. Um, then you have a, a field where you see the uh, CPU load. And then you have um, another window that shows you the distribution of the various uh, tasks over time. So you get an idea of um, how long or how uh, short different things take. Up there you have a window for the uh, context with additional information and then even more information on the system. So you can zoom out and we see that every millisecond or so we get a system tick and then we can zoom back in and uh, we see that system tick here. And then this works a little bit like, uh, like an oscilloscope for your embedded application, so you can trigger on various events. So for example, I can trigger on the high priority task uh, being run. So I see the scheduler, uh, the, the SysTick calls the scheduler, the scheduler sees, oh, the high priority task is ready to be run. Then it goes back to the scheduler, and then every now and then the low priority task also needs to run. You can see that in the flicker here, and then goes back to the scheduler and back to idle. And this is basically recorded from a working, running system. And I can show you that at, at our booth if you want to stop by. So then you can stop it at some point and just um, basically zoom out, and you can now analyze the recording. Uh, you can go back and forth from the beginning to the end. You can zoom in at any moment. Uh, that looks interesting to you. I mean, this is not a very interesting application, but just it's for demonstration purposes. Um, and you can analyze um, every single portion of it. Now, again, this is a very simple application just to show you the, the principle. Um, it becomes much more valuable if you have a, um, a higher, com more complex application like a web server, for example. So we have a, a stored recording here from um, um, uh, in interaction with our web server, and you can see there's a lot more going on. You have a lot more tasks, and there's a lot more interaction between the different tasks. So you can scroll through the recording. You can zoom in at different points, um, and you can imagine once you have interactions between tasks like this, it's really a really valuable tool to have to be able to see that everything um, executes in the right order 
everything is in its uh, in the timing uh, specifications that it has to be. So you can actually in the window below uh, you can uh, zoom in to some of the um, different tasks and you can see the distribution and you can look at the corner cases. If I if you click on one of these, it'll take you to the spot in the data stream where that particular outlier was and you can take a closer look and make sure that it's still everything is, is okay or you need to see if you need to tweak anything in your application. So that's basically how it works. So the complete solution um, with all the blanks filled in, you have system view as the API on the target and then real-time transfer. Uh, RTT is also responsible for the buffer. You have the JLink as the debug probe. Uh, obviously the JLink DLL and then the RTT DLL and then the system view uh, application that I just showed you. And if you want to try this yourself, again, the, the tricky part is that you need a RISC-V device that has the system bus access and currently not that many uh, chips that we found have that enabled. Uh, but you can get a bitstream from um, Sci-5 for this RD board that does have the system bus enabled, and so that's the one uh, we were using to test all this and to develop that. And then you can, once you have the RD board with the bitstream in there uh, with the system bus access, you can go to our website, segra.com, and you can download um, the example, uh, which also uses our uh, IDE that we have, system view, uh, sorry, embedded studio for, for Risk v And then you can basically um, try the same exercise that I just showed you um, in the comfort of your own office. So just a quick summary. Um, you can use uh, system view RTT in conjunction with a Segger J-Link to do really nice uh, visualization and analysis of a risk risk five based system. Um, you can record that data for later analysis. Um, there's really no cost involved other than uh, a J-Link debug probe, which, which you might already have. And there's no other cost in terms of uh, additional pins or other resources. Um, again, you need that system bus access. And so our plea from, from Seger to um, SOC designers or um, designers of RISC-V chips is to really consider adding that system bus access block in, in your chip when, when you do the debug block, because that's what uh, enables this kind of um, tool, tooling and, and visualization that I just showed you. All right, any quick questions? We have about a minute or so left. Question? Yeah, you can you can you can configure that buffer on the target. Um, you can you, it's it's about 600, uh, 600 bytes, but you can scale it, and and it depends on um, how many events you you tr you want to um, uh, basically capture. But it's it's configurable. Uh huh. Yeah. Drop the data, or can you well say too much? Or so the question is, uh, when there's too much data coming in, so you will you will see uh, system view will will give you an indicator if it has uh, dropped frames. Um, so you will see if you missed some some stuff. Um, so if there's too much information coming in, uh, you will see that you you're missing some things. Um, at least, obviously, it can't show you the stuff that it missed, but at least you know you you, ha you don't have a hundred percent recording. All right, one more. System bus access uh, part of the debug Yes, yes. The, the, um, the one slide I showed you was straight out of the uh, debug spec, at least the version 0.13.2 with the, the kind of de facto standard debug spec. So it is, it is in there, but it's optional. So you don't, you don't have to add the system bus access block to do your debug module. I mean, you can save a fraction of a fraction of a square millimeter and not put it in, but then you don't get this kind of um, 
you, you don't get the background memory accesses and then you can't use RTT and all that good stuff. All right, very last one. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, it's about uh, a microsecond, 1% uh, or so overhead or 1% um, loading uh, for your application. So it's not too bad. Okay, so we got we to gotta close it out. Um, I'm going to be at the booth if you have any questions. And otherwise, I'll thank you for your uh, time and have fun at the show. Thank you.